So right now we're going to talk about um, how RFID works. And on this particular slide, we're going to talk a little bit about using mobile devices, mobile RFID, uh, and some of the benefits of that. So Daryl, why don't you take us through those steps? Yeah, so whether, again, whether it's a mobile device that's like pictured here, or if it's fixed equipment, uh, you know, uh, readers and antennas, the, the, the passive tags, they're just what it says. It's a passive tag. And it's stimulated when it's hit with the RF frequency, when it, when it actually is hit with that, it then sends back, you know, backscatters back the information that you're looking for uh, in the tag. And in most asset tracking applications, you know, the tag itself really serves as a license plate and it identifies a particular asset in the backend inventory system. So you can, you know, perform an inventory or if you're looking for something, pull, you know, you can find that asset in the backend and it's linked through the EPC code in the RFID tag. Mm -hmm. This brings up an interesting point as we start talking about mobile RFID and on the next slide we'll talk about fixed readers. <clears throat> this is where testing comes into play, I would think, where when you're dealing with different types of assets and on that previous slide there were different surface types, be it cardboard box or obviously a laptop, with various options available on passive RFID tags, testing various types of tags to get you your best read range uh, certainly comes into play. Yeah, you know, understanding the customer's use case um, will help dictate things like what type of read range is, is going to be needed and, and obviously, again, the types of assets. So when we engage in these types of projects, um, we will, you know, perform testing of various tags on like or very similar assets and hopefully in a similar environment. Um, for a fairly straightforward, I'll say, IT asset tracking project, you know, we, you know, there's a number of, of excellent tags that, that we have identified that do a terrific job in those, those use cases. But, you know, some other customers we work at in other verticals, if you will, uh, construction or rental equipment, um, you know, and where they have a wide range of different equipment, that's where the testing uh, really pays off. You know, doing that work up front, you know, you know, uh, working with an integrator that has access and, and works closely with a number of tag manufacturers can be very beneficial. And, uh, you know, they can provide you with, uh, you know, a, you know, a half a dozen or so tags that they feel uh, are a good, you know, good broad tip. set of tags for you to use within your real environment, tag some of your assets and actually see how they work for you in, in, in the real world while you're doing your daily activities, you know, before you go off and buy thousands of tags. So those, those are a couple of the different ways we like to work. Uh, we like to try and to, to uh, load the tag information in the backend database so that the commissioning process or getting a tagged asset in the backend uh, asset tracking system it becomes just a pale and stick activity. You peel off a tag, put it on your asset. You look the look the uh, that that tag up in the system, and then you can apply the pedigree data right there, either uh, on on your laptop or or through the mobile app that you see pictured there. Right, right. And you brought up an interesting point. It's probably extremely important to use an integrator to guide you through the process, whether it be maybe you're starting out with a brand new project or maybe you have an existing RFID system and it's not working up to your expectations, it may be very beneficial then to get an integrator such as ADB Tracking to come in, take a look at your assets, take a look at your environment, and then make the best recommendation where it may take a few rounds of testing to identify the actual tag that works best for, you to, for your particular environmental conditions that those tags are gonna be exposed to, as opposed to doing this on yourself and essentially you're just winging it to try and get to that final result that gives you the most benefit and the best value for that investment. Yeah, and the, uh, you know, to your point, Dan, I mean, we've, we've had, you know, challenging projects where, you know, there was RF interference, which could be caused by, you know, older wireless infrastructures that operate in or around the 915 megahertz range. 
Correct. Uh, you know, we'll occasionally have to go in, perform what's known as a spectrum analysis to try and determine, you know, what other RF signals are in the application environment and 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 what we can do about them to 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 free up that that range so that the the RFID project, you know, can be everything that that uh, you're hoping that it can be. Hmm. 